I seek refuge in God from Satan the Rejected. God's Messengers, 4163. Who have inspired you as we inspired Noah and the prophets after him. And we inspired Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, the patriarchs, Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon. And we gave David the Psalms. Messengers, we have told you about messengers we never told you about, and God spoke to Moses directly. Messengers to deliver good news as well as warnings, thus the people will have no excuse when they face God. After all these messengers have come to, to them, God is Almighty Most High. But God bears witness concerning what we have revealed to you. We have he has revealed to you with it his knowledge, and the angels bear witness as well, but God suppresses his witness. Surely those who believe and repel from the way of God have strayed far astray. Those who disbelieve and transgress, God will not forgive them, nor will he guide them in any way. Exemplar the except the um, way to hell, wherein they abide forever. This is easy for God to do. O people, the messengers, messenger has come to you with the truth from your Lord. Therefore you shall believe for your own good. If you disbelieve, then to God belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. God is omniscient, most wise. Thank you, God. Any, uh, uh, Comments or uh, thoughts regarding what you just read, Susan? Listening, Shola. Four, four, one, four, it makes my heart shake that Moses, God spoke to Moses directly. I mean, he got to hear the voice of God. I mean, my God, that just... Mm, subhanAllah. I have a question. Uh, uh, it is a voice that uh, we can hear, or it is a particular voice or a specificity, like uh, the kalam that Allah used for Musa, is it the kalam that we use as humans being? What are your your thoughts about that? I think, uh, I mean, in, in this realm, in this domain, in this world, uh, it was an uh, audible voice. Um, that he could uh, hear and understand. Um, that that's my take. I mean, I don't think it's a um, extra perceptory uh, kind of uh, senses that he was uh, communicating. Um, that's the way I understood it. Okay. Allahu alam. And uh, other... I... good. Ah, oh, sorry. I had another question. For example, when uh, it is said that in Awhayna ilayka kama awhayna ila Nuhi, we've inspired you as we inspire, inspired to Nuh and uh, he quote all other prophets. Like, uh, what is their similarity? Why do they, why do the Quran quote these prophets in particularity? What are your your thoughts about that? One observation, which is uh, different than um, uh, Surah 6, I believe, verse 84, <clears throat> is that these ones, uh, the, the, the lineage, uh, comes from the children of Israel. After you have Abraham, then Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, patriarchs, Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, Solomon, uh, and David. If you notice, <clears throat> Shweb, uh, Saleh, and uh, uh, Hud aren't mentioned um, in these, uh, uh, this lineage. Um, you know, these are ones that are believed to have been basically from a, a, a different lineage than the uh, children of Israel. That's just an observation. I see. From my perspective, that the message has been one and the same through the messengers. Worship God alone. It's interesting this concept of uh, not to make distinction among God's uh, messengers. 
um, that you know we treat them as if uh, they're they're one and the same because if you reject one of God's messengers is as if you reject all of God's messengers. Um, I'll put some of the verses two eighty five. Uh, the messenger has believed in what was sent down to him from his Lord, and so did the believers. They believe in God, his angels, his scriptures, and his messengers. We make no distinction among any of his messengers. They say we hear and we obey. Forgive us, our Lord. To you is the ultimate destiny. Yes. I guess I have a 2.136. Uh, we believe in, say we believe in God and what was sent down to us and what was sent down to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the patriarchs, and what was given to Moses and Jesus. All the prophets from their Lord, we make no distinction among any of them. To him alone we are submitters. So it's interesting in this uh, verse, it's in the context of the uh, the, 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 the prophets. And then we have uh, 84. To say we believe in God and what was sent down to us and what was sent down to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the patriarchs. And what was given to Moses and Jesus and the prophets from their Lord, we make no distinction among any of them. To him alone we are submitters. And then the uh, last batch is 4, 150 through 152. It says, those who disbelieve in God and his messengers and seek to make distinction among God and his messengers and say we believe in some and reject some, and wish to follow a path in between. These are the real disbelievers. We have prepared for the disbelievers a shameful retribution. As for those who believe in God and his messengers and uh, make no distinction among them, he will grant them their recompense. God is forgiver, most merciful. You know, uh, it's interesting to think about the purpose of uh, what was God doing with sending all of these different messengers. It, it's, it's one message. It just, it took, he used a long process of establishing concepts. Each messenger came, gave a little bit different aspect to it. And some of the messengers, the prophets were giving a different uh uh, set of rights, and it what that does is it it proves that they sent the message that, that they received and delivered the message, and then it also shows humans' uh, capacity to distort God's message. But then it also shows that God always corrects the the distortions, and you have subsequent um, systems of redemption given, and then you have also it illustrates Satan's uh, propensity to uh, change that. And so it shows the complexity of the whole process. It shows the human uh, foibles, the problems of the humans in that. It shows the, uh, the, the Satan's interference in the whole process. And it, and it shows how God uh, continue is, is renewing it. And then what we have now with the final one, God is finally has the final scripture and it, and it proves the purification and it provides a code to verify Till the end of time that you have a, a, a scripture from God. So it's really quite complex that his whole process, it's one message. That's what I, that was the key point I want to say. Uh, Brother Ibrahim, do you mind muting if you're not uh, commenting? There's a fair amount of background noise. Brother Ibrahim? Assalamu alaikum. My question is, how do you know when God is inspiring you? How do you know you have inspiration from God? Yes. That's a, it's a good question. I mean, uh, I'll say the, uh, the, the flip side. You see some people, in essence, they become uh, very uh, uh, obsessive compulsive because they think they're like uh, constantly trying to assess like the 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 inspiration um but uh yeah i don't know if anyone has any um 
Any thoughts on that? How do you know when God is inspiring you? Can I share some thoughts? Yeah, please do. Um, well, we do know. One thing we know when the, with, with, on the flip side, when it comes to whispers, we're told what to do. And when you become, when the devil whispers any idea, you see correction God and you become a seer. So in other words, I understand that as you're able to distinguish that. Um, whereas inspiration, it, I don't think it can be stopped if it's from God. It's like it's, I don't know, that because we don't see anything in the Quran that talks about how to halt God's <laughs> inspirations. I mean, who would want to do that anyways, right? But we do know on the other, on the opposite end when it comes to whispers, which I believe are interpreted in a similar way. They're thoughts in your head, you know, that come to your mind. So of myself, I usually, I, whenever I get some thought, if I get a thought of something that I'm not sure if it's it's God teaching me something or not, I seek refuge in God and reject it. I say the prayers, my Lord. And if I don't, if it's a sign, my Lord, please help me understand if this is a good omen or a bad omen to understand what it is you're trying to get me to see here. And then pray for guidance. I mean, that's what I would do. Yeah, I want to add one thing to that question, too. I mean, God says in the Quran that anything from him will have contradictions, um, that the Satan inspires vice and so forth. So I think if you believe you've been inspired by God, you could validate it with his guidance. Um, that that will be one way to see if God is speaking to you. If you get an idea or, or whatnot, whatever you believe to be inspired, but it contradicts his messages. It, it contradicts, you know, the, mm. the essence of religion and so forth. Then is it really from him? You know, is God going to point incoherent and contradictory? I think that's what the, I think that's what it really is about. It's not necessarily if you got an idea or you think it's inspired or whatnot. Is is it is it in line with who he is? His essence is it is it uh, representing him as the most merciful? Is it representing him as the truth? Is it representing his attributes? That's what's more important than did I get inspired per se. That's just my mm. uh, understanding. That's a good point because we've had many people you've seen over the years that declare messengership was what they believe is something that they believe is from God, but yet their message contradicts verses. So that's a good point. I'll share uh, just some verses that come to mind. Uh, 4251. We, uh, no, oh, sorry, wrong word, 4251. No human being can communicate with God except through inspiration from behind a barrier or by sending a messenger through whom he reveals what he wills is the most high, the most wise. These are the, the three ways that you know, God communicates with us. So uh, like he did with uh, uh, Moses from behind a barrier, directly talking with, um, or by sending a, a messenger. And the other one is uh, through inspiration, wahi. And uh, Basim put the, uh, the, the, the root for the uh, term wahi. We have different examples in the, uh, the, the, the Quran uh, of God giving inspiration beyond to the messengers. For instance, God inspired the bee. Um, God inspired... Uh, uh, the disciples, uh, God inspired uh, Moses' mother uh, to basically put Moses into the box and throw him into the, uh, the, the, the river. So, you know, inspiration, God can uh, provide that to, to any entity. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd uh, share those. Hi, Sean. Can I add something? Uh, we, we, we lost you there. Your go ahead, brother. Away. I mean, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Just take it off the uh, car. Put it on your regular phone. But go ahead. Please speak. About the verse that you just read, there, there is a, there, I had a discussion with a, someone who called himself a submitter, and the discussion revolved around this, that uh, the argument existed that how we can get, because it was said that, you know, you can have, anyone can, you can hear and get inspiration from or get information if someone um, believe, even if you believe someone is a disbeliever or does not 
uphold the Quran, you can get inspiration or you can get information or knowledge from uh, in terms of uh, wisdom and guidance. So that's right. my question is that, however, I, I, I see that somehow being a contradiction to what Quran says, because if you reject uh, Quran or if you reject the, uh, even if you reject the messenger, um, God says he will seal your mind and heart. Uh, so you will not be able to insp uh, get inspiration from God because you have wavered from the correct path until you correct that original claim. Um, if you think that, you know, they don't believe that they sh they, the, the, messengers ha the messenger has inspiration. So they think, you know, uh, you know, this is not inspiration from God. And they challenge it. So. Um, they go back and say, but yet, you know, uh, my understanding can be inspiration from God. So I see somewhat a contradiction here is that it, it, one of the, the verse you, you heard, you can, you can get inspiration from um, a messenger. Or basically, guidance comes, can come through a messenger. So if you think that guidance comes, can come through the messenger, um, then, then you have accepted this verse wholly. Otherwise, if you think, you know, the messenger cannot give you inspiration or cannot guide us uh, by, by what God inspired him, oh. then you wouldn't accept this verse fully. And as a consequence, by that, I, I realize that God will not guide this person to the truth because they have rejected that. So that's my understanding, but I like to share. I hear other perspectives as well on this. good does anyone else want to chime in on this uh topic regarding uh, uh god's inspiration you know it's such a deep topic and it's uh it has a lot of ramifications to it so i think first of all it's to look what would we call inspiration for example um god controls the hearts and minds of everyone so that controlling the mind for example you drive by a cop you pray to god please god the, uh, ha, cl show, close that cop's eyes you know and god controls his eyes and closes them and that kind of thing happens okay so uh or you get a, here's a here's a thing you're walking along and you're thinking about stuff and you suddenly get an epiphany you know you've, you've been inspired you know it, it is do we call this inspiration i think we do i there's these kinds of things god's directly involved in each one of our lives in terms of the the, the moments that you uh have certain uh life changing ideas and things like this and so i don't i don't know personally where to put the cutoff you know where is god's where does god's inspiration stop but when it comes to new information this is another this is a whole new idea new information about how to make it to god's kingdom this kind of stuff i i see this in a completely different realm that i don't think that's what we're talking about here i think the inspiration we're talking about is uh s stuff pertaining to your life not about inspiration of uh, adding to the uh the uh encyclopedia of religious doctrine you see what i mean well jeff a good example would be when i got found out god existed i remember the exact time and i had no religion before and it wasn't a thought. It wasn't me making a conclusion. It's like I was physically hit in my heart, and I went, <gasps> took a deep breath, and I realized God existed, and he was one. I would consider that inspiration at that time. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Peace exactly. be upon you. Yeah, I just want to elaborate about the inspiration thing you guys were talking about. I think there is two defini uh, definitions of it. There is a divine inspiration, and then there is the inspiration that you get. Uh, like Brother Mike was talking about. And in Surah 58.22, it says, let me post that up. <clears throat> Thank you, Faris. Uh, okay, 
So you will not find people who believe in God in the last day befriending those who oppose God and his messenger, even if they were their parents or their children or their siblings or the tribe, for these have decreed the faith into their hearts and support them with inspiration from him and admits them into gardens with flowing streams, wherein, <coughs> wherein they abide forever. God is pleased with, uh, it's going down. Uh, with them and they are pleased with him. The, these are, are the party of God, most assuredly God's party are, are, are the winners. So if, here we can see literally like this is an inspiration uh, to people, normal people, like who are believers. And then there is the divine one that we see to the prophets and all of the others. So I think it's two definitions in that and we can mix that very easily. Okay, I think that is also the test we, with the, those people who call, claim themselves as messengers also. But I have another question later, inshallah, if you want to elaborate, if you, we are done with this, inshallah. Peace. Inshallah. Is the question on the verses? Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. yeah just just throw it out there. Just throw it out yeah, there, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah the, you see the question probably, dude. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Can I add something? Yeah, go ahead, brother Amin, go ahead. Yes. Um, what I, I, what I understand from that verse, it, it starts off very generic. It says no one can communicate with God. So we know that guidance comes from God, right? So if, if, if it talks about communication, any guidance comes from God, means that the guidance to us comes from three, three different means. One of these means or more than one. So it's, there's no other way that we can get guidance from God. Uh, without these means and uh, scripture is one of those through which God's messenger provides revelation, right? Um, you know, Muhammad revealed the Quran and this is what we have now and then a message of covenant came purified and clarified things for us and that's another revelation and um, clarifications. So these are information that we receive from God through a messenger or a prophet or whatnot. And then there is direct inspiration, which we said it, it, it could pertain to guidance as well. It's not limited to, you know, momentary inspiration about getting up and doing something specific or pleasing God or doing try or whatnot. It's, it's, it could be guidance. So because it's, God is saying this, this, these are the ways I will guide you, basically, right? Sorry about that. So, yeah, he says he, he supports them. Yeah, exactly. He said he supports yeah, so, them. Yeah, communication to me is guidance. In addition to anything else that could be, communication means guidance um, because God is he's the source of guidance. So that was my two cents, basically. Thank you. Hey, brother, I mean, what do you mean by communication? Can you, can you go deeper on that? Because when you say you communicate with God, it means, well, what does that mean for you? That means uh, guidance. Uh, in, in various ways and means. It means that if you read the Quran, God says, uh, we, those, the hearts of those who do not believe, uh, they will not be guided by the Quran. But those who believe, uh, they will be guided. So this is the same thing. God will provide inspiration and guidance in us understanding the Quran as well. So everything, every guidance comes from God means that, but at the same time, guidance comes from messengers and their messages that they provide, right? This is what I understand. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Like we are on the same page. I'm just trying to understand what you mean with the communication because, like, if you look at Surah 58:22, he even goes even detail of how he decreed the faith into their hearts, and this is something that also goes in hand in hand with the sincere ones, because you have to also be sincere to even understand this. And this is something that doesn't just come like this. So, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, you know, there's a big problem in this whole realm of inspiration. And it literally has a, a, an aspect called Pentecostalism. Literally, it's a phenomena it within that's taken over Christianity in the last 120 years, 130 years. And also it exists within Islam as well. 
And I, I honestly think, so what is Pentecostalism? That's where these people are inspired directly. They say by the Holy Ghost, so they, they feel God is coming through them and inspiring them. They'll speak in tongues. They talk about how God is telling them this and that. And clearly, from our perspective, they're, they're fully misguided. So something is happening there. They're not just making it up. Something is happening there. And my guess is, is that the jinns get to fool around with them, uh, this kind of thing. And so, so that means that we have a real problem on our hands when, I, when we think that we're being inspired. We have to test it. And I think Dr. Khalifa would look for signs to verify it's things he'd say he looked for there were a lot of signs you listen to his audios and he talk about look, looking for signs and you see where moses was looking for a sign uh if that was the right spot to to find the person uh you know when the fish snuck out sneakily this this notion so i just wanted to throw that out there Any other uh, questions or uh, comments regarding the, uh, the 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 verses we read? Peace be upon you all. Um, well, I'm remembering to say that um, away from the chat and thank God for this opportunity, this study. Um, I should I think some good comments. I wanted to add um, input. I think was sought regarding like you know other people, um, like you know someone if. Interacting with someone it doesn't seem like they believe in the messenger or particular thing and coming to a conclusion uh, on them. And the thought that came to me, just thought to share it in case it's helpful, is that um, you know, we we don't we don't really know. Um it's God that knows the past and the future. We don't know what that person's journey is like. Um, because we know faith is a journey and is that where they're at at this point that they haven't come to fully accept everything um, tomorrow that may change uh, or next week next month next year um, and um, uh, and we all you know we, we come here where our souls are different places um, and um, and God holds us responsible based on what he's given us so there's a lot of factors that go into judgment that's why you know god is the best judge and um he's the ultimate judge um there may be situations where we may need to make a call on someone for the sake of our own souls like um in the case of marriage one needs to kind of come to a conclusion okay at this time uh, does it seem like this is someone who believes um and or you know an allying with someone um and in those situations, I think, you know, to me, like the the wise approach is, okay, this is you know, asking God for guidance. And if, if we need to make a call for, for ourselves, asking God for guidance and recognizing that we don't know everything and we may be wrong. And even for right at this moment, that may change in the future. So it's not like, a, you know, we don't decide anybody's destiny, but uh, yeah, those are, those are kind of... Uh, the thoughts that come to me about that in terms of inspiration something i've been thinking about recently is uh distinguishing you know like if if there's an idea on doing something um whether you know okay is that just like a like a good idea that god has blessed me with and you know yeah that may be good um i can kind of decide do i want to do this right now or not or is it inspiration from God? And I really, like, you know, um, I really need to act on that. Um, so that's something that's sometimes hard for me to, to, to tell. Because if it is inspiration from God, I want to take it a lot more seriously. Rather than, you know, there's a lot of good ideas, a lot of different good things that one can do that occurs to one, um, both in the cause of God and in one's life. But then... You know, sometimes it's hard for me to tell, like, okay, is this, is this something that God is showing me, telling me? Um, so if there's any input on that, um, I think, of course, it's, you know, asking God for guidance is the thing that comes to me. But if there's any other input, I'd like to hear it. Thanks.
Yes, yeah, I have I have an input on that, and I think um it might be very, very um helpful to to look at um. Abraham's story in which, um, he believed the dream, and the dream essentially asked him to kill his son, as a test per se, and I think that contradicts God attributes. I think it's always wise for us to always validate whatever idea of inspiration, whatever we claim it to be, with who we know God to be. Um, and is it is it representing God's essence? Is it representing God as merciful? Is it representing God as compassionate? Is it representing representing God as being just and so forth and so on? I think that will really help with the the guidance of like, can it be from Him or not from Him in that sense? Um, because I think everything is from God in that sense, and and something could be a trial, it could be a test, but if it aligns with who He is, His essence, and who who He represents, and who He tells us who He is in the Quran and the guidance and validating the authentic scripture, then um I think it kind of helps us to kind of determine oh okay this was inspired by him as something positive because it's, it's for me to help this individual and so forth so it's from god versus like oh this is for my own ego i want to boost myself and because god wouldn't want me to do this based on what i know so that's how i interpret it like try to validate it with who god is uh, and what he represents in his consistency and his essence and his, his attributes because he has the best attributes i could uh chime in um I'm thinking that, you know, this is regarding, like, say, if you have a, a question that's not like a religious uh, one, you know, should I take this job? Should I not? Um, you know, should I go to this event? Should I not? Um, I see sometimes some people, they get stuck in this uh, kind of like OCD loop where they're looking for a sign from God, some sort of inspiration to as to what they do. And, uh, personally, I think that's the, the not the, the, the best approach. Um, for these matters, I, I think of sort of 3 verse 159 says, uh, uh, it was mercy from God that you became compassionate towards them. Had you been harsh and mean-hearted, they would have abandoned you. And then it says, therefore you shall pardon them, ask forgiveness for them, and consult them. Once you make a decision, carry out your plan, and trust in God, God loves those who trust in Him. Um, the way I see when it comes to these you know, matters, as far as, like, say, our uh, daily um, uh, decisions that we have to make, right? Or life decisions we have to make that don't necessarily uh, reflect on uh, righteousness is that we just make a plan and we trust in God. Uh, and if we trust in God, then we know that every step we take, every in engagement that we uh, have, uh, every event that happens to us was destined to be that way. We wholeheartedly submit and we joyfully submit uh, to, 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 to God's decision. Um, I think that takes a lot of the, 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 the burden off. You know, did I make the right decision? Did I not? Um, something to, 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 to contemplate on. You know, there's the verse that says that uh, if God's guiding you, who can mislead you? You know, there's if God is guiding you, you can't. You, that means you don't even have to worry about it. And I remember there's a really good audio where Dr. Kleep is talking about dreams where he's saying, don't even pay any attention to them. You know, and uh, and the, the point I'm trying to say is that he's uh, that God, he said this, Dr. Cleef had said something like this, that don't worry about it. If God wants you to know something, you're going to know it. So if you don't pay attention, if you think you read it wrong, whatever, and you're looking at the tea leaves and all this other stuff, I know we're not doing that. I, that was a figure of speech. I'm saying that you don't have to worry about it to that level. God will let you know. That's the point. Great point. Yeah, God's not going to have to be subtle. Go on, go ahead, please. Welcome. Yeah, I was just going to try to stick to Quran and see, like, if there was verses. Um, yeah, personally, sometimes I get uncomfortable going too far out, so I like to see like verses that specifically say that, pretty much. Um, and so. I I mean, obviously, I agree that God is going to let you know, but we have to be in the right place, right? Our sincerity has to be in the right place. So I could see, because God also can, I don't know if God would mislead, but I think there's a verse that talks about that, like those who wish to be, you know, misguided. So um, I think it's a good question, uh, you know, 
do we get inspiration? And my comment would just be, if you don't get it from God, then where else are you getting it from, right? If it's good, it's from God. If it's right and true, it's from God. So I wouldn't say that a messenger's inspiration would be from one place and any other inspiration that's good and from, I mean, it would be from God, right? So I think that that point was already made. Um, so that's also interesting as well. At the same time, I don't know necessarily that any inspiration that we get is necessarily a scripture. It doesn't make it a scripture, but it, if it's, it can still be helpful to us. Um, and we, you know, perhaps it's on a personal basis versus uh, to messengers. It's on a um, dissemination basis, um, you know, or a clarification basis for dissemination. That doesn't mean that we may not get inspiration that allows us to clarify something for others as well. But, you know, so I guess I think a lot of this comes back down to the similar places where people see things differently, you know, what is scripture, and what is a revelation, and, and um, yeah, so I think it's an interesting question. I like Brother Mike's point about seeking refuge, you know, when we get um, inspiration to clarify where it's from, and a lot of it may come down to tools that we have. So we have, um, you know, the uh, asking God for guidance, we have Fatiha, we have um, the scripture to really, you know, look through the text and say, hey, does this inspiration match up or go against what the scripture says? Um, someone else pointed out God's attributes. Does it go against, you know? Um, and I think that we easily, I personally easily fall into like, hey, give me an easy answer for all my situations and end of story. Um, but I think the part that we forget is this is the part where we are worshiping God alone or not. This is the action part. Um, so no matter how much, you know, we can study swimming until we swim, it's, it's not necessarily helpful. So all the tools that we study, those are the parts that we establish our righteousness, our behavior. Um, so I, I guess my reminder to myself and anyone else who it might be helpful for is just that when I seek shortcuts, and I'm not saying that that's what's happening, but I just think that he, there is a toolbox and part of our process is using the toolbox to arrive at a conclusion. Thank you. God bless you, brother. Thank you very much. By the way, the uh, comment that Jeff made, <clears throat> I put the verse in the chat. It's 3937. It says, And whomever, I'm talking about. And whomever God guides, none can send him astray. Is God not almighty avenger? So if God guides someone, no one can misguide that person. If God sends someone astray, no one can uh, guide that person. Peace be upon everybody. Thank you for joining the world's largest public Quran study. This is excellent news. Um, we read the verses, chapter 4 from verse 163 to 170. We can load them again just so it's further up. Everyone can access them again. Uh, four one. Let's see. Four one. Put in. Yeah. Thank you. If you could put them in again, thank you very much. If, if we don't have comments, we can move on to the next uh, uh, batch. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, and if I have a comment. To, if I please may. give your comment. Yeah, and I think Brother Tom yeah, has a comment. Everyone. Peace be upon uh, you, sister. Just, uh, sometimes people do uh, make it confused. They get confused between inspiration from God or uh, whispers from Satan. They cannot uh, really get the under correct understanding. But inshallah, in light of the Quran, they can always come with the correct understanding. We get a lot of false messengers that pop up every once in a while. And this is a verse I wanted to read about it that clarifies it a bit further. By God's will. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. False messengers condemn. This is Surah six, verse ninety-three. Who is more evil than the one who fabricates lies and attributes them to God, or says 
I have received divine inspiration, but no such inspiration was given to him, or says I can write the same as God's revelation. If only you could see the transgressors at the time of death, the angels extend their hands to them, saying, let go of your souls. Today you have incurred a shameful retribution for saying about God other than the truth and for being too arrogant to accept his revelations. Praise God. Thank you very Can much. You Brother Tom has a comment. Please go ahead, Brother Tom. Uh, Moshe Navi, John, God bless you. Just real quick, I, uh, just real, real quick. Just wanted to uh, say thank you to God first, first and foremost, and thank you to Brother Rizwan for such an incredible comment uh, and reminder about the tools. The tools. We have all that, all the tools in the Quran to to be to allow us to ward off anything. You know, I can't be articulate as him. But uh, he referenced Brother Mike's I Stake Refuge in God, all of that. Yeah, those are tools, powerful tools, nothing else. Go back to the Quran. It's full, it's complete, fully detailed. It, it will find a way out for us, inshallah. Thank you so much for your time. All right, Brother Jude, did you want to load the next batch of verses and have those read? Let's do it. Before you do that, a... guys. Before you yeah. do that, please. go ahead, brother Bassin. We're not <laughs> God bless, you, bro. Before we we go, I want to go into the verse one sixty four because that verse is very like it's kind of tricky to be honest. Because when God says and messengers, we never told you about. How do you elaborate on that one? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So obviously, there's some messengers we know about, and there's a whole bunch of messengers we don't even know about. We don't know any of those people. So we don't make a distinction between God's messengers. We say we believe in all of them, whether we know about them or not. But we need to be aware of the fact that there were messengers sent to other nations and peoples and communities that we just never heard about those. We never heard about them. Okay? Yeah. So that's the bottom line is that we need to humble ourselves and recognize the limitations of our knowledge when it comes to this topic. You see? So there could be some wonderful messengers. We don't know about them. We don't have the knowledge. We just know that they exist. Okay. So did you want to add anything to that, Brother Bassam? Yeah, bro. Because in the next verse, it really completes the whole essence, what, what they do. To, de to deliver good news as well as warning. So it could be a news. It could be anything, information. But the thing is like, how would you know, like, the, the concept is sometimes people, we don't listen to each other because uh, I, can, I can have this discussion with you, for example. Let's say we have a discussion. But sometimes you, you might not understand what I'm saying. It might then be in the messenger that, that uh, gives you the warnings or the news that I have my understanding and you're not neglecting to that, for example. You know what I mean? So I'm just thinking like, okay, we are, we all human beings and we make falls and we, we are like instruments from God, inshallah. But the thing is like, I think this, this topic is very, is very detailed and very like dangerous also at the same time. But the whole aspect, what I'm trying to say is that we should listen to each other and don't just like, oh yeah, he or she is saying something and we just like, yeah, we don't uh, like, for example, we don't make any assumption before we look into the information, we listen to people. That's why we have to be good listeners in the end. MashaAllah. Excellent. Excellent comment. And I think Sister Medina made a comment, but she cannot speak, so I can read it for her, inshallah, even with my voice. Medina wrote, Salaam Alaikum. I think based on my experience, inspiration from God are thoughts slash ideas that are placed into our minds to encourage us to do righteous works or get closer to God. In my case, I was inspired to start worshiping God as soon as possible because I used to think that I used to think I can wait until like I'm older when I'm done raising kids and can dedicate my time fully to God. But with in the inspiration, I suddenly realized that my thinking was wrong and unjust towards God. 
how could I expect blessings from God when I was planning to worship him like after the age of 50? I was 24 at the time. So after that inspiration and deciding to worship, to start worshiping God ASAP, I found submission within a week. Praise God. God bless you. That's amazing, Sister Medina. And then she wrote, but as submitters, if we get thoughts and not sure whether they are righteous, it's better not to consider them to be inspiration from God. Excellent comments. Thank you so much for sharing that uh, insight with us, Medina, and your personal experience. That's very valuable information and very valuable wisdom and knowledge you shared. Anyone else want to make any more comments about those verses? All right. Otherwise, may Brother God, Duke, yeah, may, God go send you, may God send you a quick hit in the Navijan. Thank you very much. God bless you, Brother Tom. Thank you. All right, Brother Dude, can you load the next batch of verses? And can we get a volunteer to read these verses, please? It's from 4171 to 4176. Who's the volunteer today? I just want to say uh, thanks for all the input on the inspiration. Thanks. No problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the name of God, most precious, most merciful. 4171. All people of the scripture, do not transgress the limits of your religion and do not say about God except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was a messenger of God and his words that he had sent to Mary and a revelation from him. Therefore, you shall believe in God and his messenger. Brother, 171. 171. That's what I'm reading, brother. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. No problem. <clears throat> uh, therefore, you shall believe in God and his messenger. You shall not say Trinity. You shall refrain from this from your, for your own good. God is only one God. Be he glorified, he is much too glorious to have a son. To him belongs everything in the heavens and everything on earth. God suffices as Lord and Master. The Messiah would never disdain from being a servant of God, nor would the closest angels. Those who disdain from worshiping him and are too arrogant to submit you will summon them all before him. As for those who believe and lead a righteous life, he, would, he will fully recompense them and shower them with his grace. As for those who disdain and turn arrogant, he will commit them to painful retribution. They will find no Lord beside God, nor a Savior. O oh, people, a proof has come to you from your Lord. We have sent down to you a profound beacon. Those who believe in God and hold fast to him, you will admit them into mercy from him and grace and will guide them to him in a straight path. He consults you. Say, God advises you concerning the single person. If one dies and leaves no children and he had a sister, he gets half of the inheritance. If she dies first, he inherits from her. If she left no children, if there were two sisters, they get two-thirds of the inheritance. If the siblings are men and women, the male gets twice the share of the female. God first clarifies for you, lest you go astray. God is fully aware of all things. MashaAllah. Any uh, comments or uh, questions regarding these uh, series of verses uh, from uh, 4171 through 176? Yes, um, in 4173, what exactly is God's grace? I mean, it sounds good, but what is it exactly? Is it fever? Is it, what is it? I think it can tell so many things. It can tell so many things. The grace that we receive by 
even uh, the provision we received from him, um, the knowledge, the wisdom, you know, the message we have received, the guidance, all these are part of God's grace. So it doesn't tell so many things. It depends on what comes to you of his grace at any point in time in your life. Ashallah. May God increase my knowledge. Uh, it, it basically boils down to uh, God blessing us with things that we really don't deserve, despite all our transgressions, despite all our disbelief, what we, what we did in the higher heaven, you know, uh, during the field and all of that. And then you look around. You look around, you see Yosemite, you see all of these beautiful places. We're supposed to be in jail, right? To try to mm -hmm. clean up ourselves, right? But you look around, what kind of jail we have. Wow. Then you say, yeah, yeah. this is God blessing us with things we really don't deserve. That's However, crazy. in that case, in that case, would it not be God's mercy as distinguished? Uh, you from can look people? at it either way. Uh, it could be his mercy. Uh, it, you can do it interchangeably. Uh, mercy could also be like uh, forgiving our sins that, you know, we should be actually punished for, right? Praise God. And that's why I wanted um, a clarification on what it actually means as grace, because I also thought it could be mercy, but if it was mercy, it would have said mercy. If it was his forgiveness, it would have said forgiveness. Grace was kind of, um, I couldn't, I don't understand exactly what it means. Yeah, like I said, God's grace entails so many things. Must, the grace of God would come when he is giving us the chance to have uh, so many things in life and his provisions uh, uh, when we need him, you know, uh, in our lives, anytime. Mercy, you know, encompasses because he is giving us the chance uh, to be redeemed. You know, after being uh, having this mercy to be redeemed, then God's grace flows on us, provides us with shelter, with protection, with provisions, anything that we need to be happy. God provides for us, no matter how small. I can remember in Surah 11, verse 86, it says, if you are believers, whatever God provides for you, no matter how small, you should appreciate it. So uh, God's grace entails uh, so many things. And in, in fact, this is why it goes hand in hand with uh, his grace and mercy uh, upon his creation. Inshallah. So I could uh, add to it. Yeah, so in, in Arabic, right, there are two separate words to one is rahma, which is uh, mercy, and then the other one is fadl, which is uh, grace. And another way I, I think of grace is the, the aspect of preference. He gives us this uh, uh, preference um, in the sense of you think of all the uh, abilities, the uh, uh, powers that God has bestowed upon us, you know, the ability to see, to uh, taste, to touch, to think. Uh, to, uh, you know, have this kind of dominion um, is really God's uh, uh, preference. But at the same time, it, it comes with a whole lot of uh, responsibility as well. So if, if we uh, are unappreciative or we misuse these, then it's only going to hurt us uh, in this life and in the hereafter. Peace, peace. Peace be upon you. Brother Derek, we cannot understand you. Unfortunately, I think you're you have bad reception on your ship. We cannot understand you, brother. Your sound is broken. Oh, he's on, he's on a ship. Derek is on a ship. Salam alaikum, everyone. I've got a comment on that. I mean, the difference that I see between the God's mercy, uh, mercy 
uh, it's uh, when God uh, forgives. Uh, I understand it this way. When he forgives what we have done, I mean, as a huge uh, a crime as we have done, that's God's mercy by not punishing at least immediately. Uh, the, and then uh, the, uh, the grace includes its undeserved uh, gifts, undeserved, uh, 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 even mercy, part of it is undeserved. It is, it is undeserved. Uh, when it's uh, related to human being. We don't deserve it. So uh, his grace uh, includes that, the giving of all the gifts that is undeserved, also forgiveness, giving us time uh, to realize uh, what we have done and maybe change our ways. So that's his grace. I mean, he, in other words, it's just, like you go into court of law, and the judge is uh, great. Uh, back to you. Sister Sohela, you want to mute yourself? Sister Sohela, you want to mute yourself? Thank you. Go can you ahead, brother. Now? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead, brother, please. Uh, yeah, I just want to add to that. That was my same definition of grace. Receiving blessings that you believe you don't really deserve. That's a simple definition from my eyes. As well, I was thinking that um, whereas an, an atheist or an agnostic would um, look upon someone who just happened, like everything happens to be going good in their life, and the atheist or the agnostic may see that person is lucky. However, for the believer, for the submitter, I guess we can see that um. God is gracious upon us, something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, I want to go back Russia. to um, Trinity. Uh, just add, you know, um, I think it's on verse uh, 171. Um, much has been said about this concept. Just wanted to share uh, Surah 43, uh, verse 81, uh, which actually asks us to proclaim, if the most gracious did have a son, I, and inshallah, all of us will still be the foremost worshippers, inshallah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, okay, I also want to say something uh, in respect to 171, 172, you know, confirming the identity of uh, Jesus uh, to us. You know, we um, all believe that, we all believe that uh, Jesus no. was the servant of God, a messenger of God. Who had, uh, who had, you know, worshipped God alone, without, uh, you know, ascribing himself or any partners to God. So, for the Christians who would believe that Jesus is a part of a Trinity, uh, praise God, we have it here in, in the Quran that uh, Jesus was never part of uh, God uh, in any way, and he was never a God. And this is one of the reasons why God is, you know, uh, inviting all the believers of every religion to believe in the Quran. If uh, the Christians would believe in the Quran, then they would come to know that Jesus was just a human being like, like every one of us, and that he was uh, a blessed servant of God, you know, and does not deserve to be worshipped. 172 says the Messiah would never descend from being a servant of God, nor would the closest angel. So, so, um, so if Jesus would never, you know, descend from being a servant of God, then how can he be a God beside God? 
or how can he be the only God? Because uh, some Christians would say, uh, God, you know, uh, emanate, you know, place himself into Jesus' body to become uh, a human being just for him to forgive us. So um, any Christian who would have this in mind, we should know that uh, he's just a pagan, just like uh, we read in Surah 5, verse 72 uh, to about 76. So uh, this is my comment here. Jesus was a servant of God. Jesus was never a God. And he had uh, proclaimed aloud to the people that he is a servant of God and that he worships God alone. Mashallah. Mashallah. Totally well said. Just wanted to add Surah 112 to that. Praise God. Praise God. Alhamdulillah. That's a good one. All right, um, would you want to read the Surah 112? Sure, so. I can read it. Uh, it says, proclaim, he is the one and only God, the absolute God. Never did he beget, nor was he begotten. None equals him. SubhanAllah. All right, any more questions or comments about the verses that were read from uh, 4163 all the way to 4176? Do you have any comments there? Talked about a few different topics, messengers, and also the Trinity, Jesus, the Messiah, we have the proof. 4174 is the proof. The Quran's mathematical code. Tangible, irrefutable proof. Oh, people, a proof has come to you from your Lord. We have sent down to you a profound beacon. Go ahead, dude, please. I was going to just read uh, two verses. So one is uh, 2125. It says, We did not send any messenger before you except with the inspiration there's no God except me. You shall worship me alone. This shows that, you know, every single one of God's messengers all uh, preach the, uh, the, the, the worship of God alone, particularly in their uh, declaration of faith. Uh, the other one is uh, 517. It says, Pagans indeed are those who say that God is the Messiah, the Son of Mary. Say, who could oppose God if he willed to annihilate the Messiah, Son of Mary, and his mother, and everyone on earth? God belongs to the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth and everything between them. He creates whatever he wills. God is omnipotent. It just goes to show, you know, this this reverence that um, um, people put towards these, you know, creations of God. That they're nothing in comparison to God. There's one other verse, I think it's in uh, 35-45. If God punish you for your sin, you would annihilate everyone. Subhanallah. Mm. That's be to God. That's a very wonderful it's a good point. point. This very includes powerful. Jesus. This mm -hmm. includes Jesus and all the other creatures. It says everyone. Mm -hmm. If God punished the people for their sins, he would not That's leave right. a single creature on earth. But he respites them for a predetermined mm. interim. Once they're interim is fulfilled, then God is seer of his servants. That's Praise right. God. Praise God. So just one the, Quran is, the Quran is wisdom. MashaAllah. Full of wisdom. Point out that it says if God punished the people, right? So this is in mm. reference to the humans for their sin, did not leave a single creature on earth. Meaning that even the, uh, the, the, the creatures that are residing within this earth, they also have uh, this uh, original sin. That's right. <clears throat> if, 
if, if God did not tell us specifically the things uh, Jesus, what, you what? know, had, if, if God did not uh, show us in the Quran specifically the sins Jesus had committed, it does not mean that in his entire life as a human being, he never committed a sin. That's right. Like That's God, a very good point. Like, like, yes, like God says, he overlooked many of our sins. That's and right. Even the, yeah, and even the one, you know, God mentioned for us in the Quran with uh, about some other messenger, it is practically for a good reason for us not to uh, see them because they are messengers of God, uh, they can commit any sins, and then uh, the human beings will now think, uh, since these people have done something, and it is by the way, we can also do it. God does not want us to repeat such things, and he wants us to know that they are human beings, and they are subject to committing error or sin. Marshall. I wanted to um, and I just thought of an example of what we just read, that if God were to punish us for our sins, would not leave a single creature, it would be like an asteroid that would hit the earth, it will wipe out the humans, including everything else on it. So God is to punish the humans, but also every other creature, as a result, will be wiped out as well. So, based on reading the Quran and like other, like scripture from the Bible and stuff, my question is, is it something in, in our nature that we are just inclined to disobey God? Like, we just happen to just... That's where... That's, that's, where our, our, point. that's our gin, brother. We're getting representation from both sides. We're getting the natural instinct to worship God alone. That's what we're born with. And then we also have our gin, which is instructing us to disobey our Lord. So there you have it. Both sides are being presented to us. It's our decision to what we want to do. Even in the, in like, how we say in, in the high society, when we sort of questioned if we should fully submit, did we have a gin then? We were still transgressing even then. No, we didn't have a gin. We had ego and arrogance. And that's why I said, in, in, like, in the first place, something with us, we are just, like, naturally inclined to, to disobey, in a way. But further, like, that's, it seems to me like it still makes sense because if we actually get through all of the tests, it sort of makes sense why we should be rewarded with everlasting peace and fulfillment, basically heaven. So it makes sense in a way. Not in a way, it makes sense fully, actually. Um, mashallah, yeah, so this is Bro, kind of putting brother, it all... Uh, this is a... Oh, oh, mashallah. No, go ahead, sister. You know my... You know my policy, sister. <laughs> okay. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Praise God. Um, yeah, I was just going to say that, yeah, kind of putting it all together that um, this, is, this is what brought us here, that ego. And so we have um, the ego, and, and that's, the that's the kind of root of the um, tendency to idolize. Like we, we thought that Satan maybe could be a god beside god so um that's what we come here with that's why we're here is because of that um flaw that um and so here we that's what we're here with and to overcome it we need to we need to overcome it by worshiping god alone and killing our ego and essentially following god's guidance and path so if we don't do that, our default state is, that's our default state is, you know, we're here with the ego and everything that it, you know, um, uh, everything that it manifests as, um, leading us to be unappreciative and greedy and stingy and anxious and impatient and those things. May God help us. Thanks. Yeah, and this is also part of by the God, when it's when God says um it is predetermined that hell will be filled with uh with humans and jinns. So it all makes sense. 
Alhamdulillah. So sister said, well, I, you know, the thing I wanted to emphasize is this, this concept of the problem we have. And, and you said it, what is it? Do we have an inclination toward idol worship? What is it? Exact, I think you're hitting the nail on the head. Why? Why is it? Because we have an aspect in this. We are All right, Jeff, we cannot understand you. Okay. All right, Jeff, that's okay. Thank you very much. I just wanted to take this opportunity to announce to everybody, please sign up for the uh, Quran study of next week. Uh, we're not done here, but I just wanted to put this out so everyone can tap interested. Please tap interested. I put the event in VC1 chat. You should see the check mark in the box. So please tap interested over there and sign up we for have, the Quran study. I have. I have God bless you. Already. Thank you very God much. Seven you. people signed up. We have 42 people here. Only seven people signed up. So I expect at least 20 to 30 people signing up on this. It takes two seconds. Just tap on interested on the box. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, maybe maybe my signal is my signal better now? Because I, I it's like it's a point that I want to emphasize. Am I better now? Yes, a little bit. Uh, you can hear me now. Okay. Uh, this it's the ego. You know this this ego problem. It's it's behind what we can even detect. We have such a problem that we are asking the question, like the brother said, what is what is this? What is our problem? Is it an inclination? I'm I do the same thing. I'm asking myself, what the heck is wrong with me that I don't see obviously that God runs every single thing? What is it that what is this tendency behind us? And I think that it's uh, that we have to have an extremely high powered microscope on ourselves to see all of these tentacles, these ways in which this ego, so we can actually get a grasp of what is this thing that is actually controlling us, because it it it, it is literally what got got us put here to begin with. And I think that 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 question is a fantastic question because it opens the door to the examination of what are how is this ego attacking me? How is this ego uh, controlling me? All this stuff, mashallah. Inshallah. Is this just the consequence of having free will? Like, I think I think it is because uh, the Quran no. also said, no, I don't have, I don't know the, the exact uh, words for it, but uh, basically God says uh, he, he offered every other living creature besides humans um, the chance to have free will. And they all denied it. And we as humans, we accepted it and we were transgressing as a result. So it's brother, I don't think it's just free will. I think it's a disregard for truth in favor of your own opinion or of a favor of an idea you have. It's the disregard of truth. That's the that's the violation. This whole project here, it's about to uh to uh establish truth and defeat falsehood. This, our ego, what is the, the element of ego, what does it do? It places something above the truth. This is the problem. So I, do, I think it's a disregard for truth is the issue. Yeah, I think, I think it's a little bit of a... Um, I think the angels had the same freedom. So they didn't, they didn't, the freedom didn't cause them to fall. Right? Go ahead, Brother Akib. Um, I, 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 was, I don't know if it's a consequence of, of freedom, but I think it's a consequence of not trusting God. I think that's what the biggest key is. Um, we as humans, we, are, we, are, we, are, we can't see behind our heads, right? So we're always going to be limited. We're always going to be limited. So we have to trust. Now you could trust him or you could trust yourself or you could trust... But we have to trust, and I think that's what the test is. That he, there's always going to be an aspect in life where you just have to trust, and that comes with a risk of just like you may trust yourself, you may trust God, or you may trust something else. 
that comes with a risk. But I think that's what the issue is. We just don't trust, period, all the time. It may not necessarily be a free will thing, but it may be definitely a trust thing, in my opinion. Peace, brothers and sisters. Uh, I had a comment as well regarding this ego. Um, we all know by now that why we are on planet Earth, because we are rebellious in creatures and we doubted God's absolute authority. And what caused us to lose, uh, forget about God's absolute authority was our ego. And our ego make us do all the wrong thing. We rebelled against God. We uh, cited with Satan's point of view, not totally like James, but we uh, basically thought that we know better than God. And if that wasn't bad enough, Adam and Eve in paradise, after God says, do not touch the tree, they went ahead and touched the tree, duped by Satan, and lack of wisdom of God's majesty. God will never tell them do not something that is would be bad for them. So all of these things hand in hand it shows our ego, our arrogance and our ego. And because of it, God has warned us for us to succeed in this world and actually make it to paradise is to realize that God is running everything. But what kills our ego that's the remedy. Uh, I'm going to read God willing 254. Kill your ego. Recall that Moses said to his people, Oh, my people, you have wronged your souls by worshiping the calf. You must repent to your creator. You shall kill your egos. This is better for you in the sight of your creator. He did redeem you. He is the Redeemer most merciful. The footnote says, it is the ego that led to Satan's fall. It is the ego that caused our exile uh, to this world. And it is the ego that is, being, that is keeping most of us from redemption to God's kingdom. So our focus should be basically to kill our ego. Uh, and uh, that cannot happen unless you believe that God is running everything. So you take yourself out of the equation. You just submit cheerfully and wholeheartedly. If you know the majesty of God, this would be the greatest blessing on you because God says that I control everything. He says, I knew you before I created you. This doesn't leave any room for us to make a mistake anymore. This is it. We are using the last blessing, the last uh, blessing from God to actually side with God. If we are not with God, then we are with Satan. There is nothing in between. And um, the scripture that we have received, purified by the messenger of the covenant, Mathematical miracle of Quran, code 19. He's proof for <clears throat> deciphering this. All these things are reasons why we will be held in account uh, in a very, very big, huge responsibility on our neck. We have zero reason to say we went astray. On top of it, God has given us this wonderful platform where every human being from across the globe can access it, come in, ask questions, and get the absolute truth from words of God in Quran. Uh, inshallah, we could succeed in this. And um, as uh, as was wonderfully said in Rashad's Dr. Khalifa's sermon on the fact that God is running everything, it's a uh, wonderful video to refer to to really understand the khutbah on it and we are really blessed but uh, God willing we will use the rope that God sent us um, to basically rescue ourselves. God bless you. Thank you very much. Peace GPS. We have a comment from Sister Salam. Salam How do we raise our hands? Okay, go ahead. Hold on one second. Sister, sister, 
Um, Hold on a second. Okay. It's Sister Sana's turn. Go ahead, Sana. Please, yes. Sister, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I think if we look at the story of um, how we got here, it does seem to, for me, make evident that it's not simply a consequence of free will that we became sinners and transgressors, because um, there's verses that talk about how the angels actually questioned our creator when he said, I'm going to send the humans down um, to the earth. They said, why would you send down those who will spread bloodshed and we're here singing your praises? And God just said, I, I know what you don't know. And the angels backed off, right? They didn't start arguing <clears throat> with God. They just said, okay, you're right. You know what I don't know. So I think that's an example of creatures who have free will because they were able to question what God was doing, but they quickly realized they're wrong to do so. Um, and then they backed off. Um, so I think the story of creation, I think, you know, even how we got categorized as human beings, um, it's not that we were categorized as human beings or given free will and then we fell. It's that we, you know, it seems to me different creatures had their free will. Satan had his, you know, the jinn had their free will, the, whoever was going to become human had their free will, whoever was going to become an angel had their free will. But we chose what we chose and then we became categorized accordingly. I think the story of creation matches that understanding much better as opposed to free will causes sin um okay that's all i was going to say thank you very much sister ronnie you wanted to make a comment peace be upon you go ahead please go ahead sister ronnie you wanted to make your comment you can unmute and speak now. Okay. Um, She's muted. Wonderful. Okay. This was funny. I um, think. I, yes. I just wanted to say that uh, all of us, we have been talking about ego, ego, ego. You know, we, we, we need to always remember or know the definition of uh, the ego. What is ego, and who is it that you know goes with this ego? So I just want us to say to understand that uh, if we understand that the ego is a god beside God, and we all uh, truly believe that we are submitters and we submit to God alone as uh, believers, then we should always give priority to whatever God will decide uh, for us. Whatever he says is what we must, you know, accept. That will help us kill our egos. Mashallah. Okay. Um, like see, see a, a, a verse or, or point out a verse for, I think it was Sister Sada. Um, Surah 66, verse 6. Like, read that and tell me if you think angels have free will. Like I think if if the if the prop if the possibility of you disobeying God is zero, I don't think you have free will. Because God says they never disobey and they are, they are, they do exactly as they commanded. I don't think that hints us free will. That, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of this world that we 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 sit on the fence or. We were undecided. We couldn't decide that God is God Almighty. But the angels did. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Um, can, can I speak right now, inshallah? Yes, of course. Go ahead, please. Okay, so <clears throat> the ego, if you look at the definition you know there's few definitions about ego so uh, and one definition is that ego being the false uh, self you know or center and actual definition of ego is that are you know very close what we understand is the the part of the mind that mediates between the conscious and the unconscious 
and is responsible for reality testing and a sense of personal identity. What got, that's what happened to Satan, that he thought he, he, he is something on his own too. A sense of being uh, without anything else being part of it. And when we have to kill our ego, that means a complete submission to God alone, meaning we absolutely have no power over anything, even including the taking next step. When God says, always say, inshallah, <clears throat> before anything about the saying about the future, we proclaim at that time that basically nothing is in my control. Like even if I... I'm saying that I will do it, but if only God wills. So the killing the ego is the complete submission or acknowledging I'm nothing and God is everything. That is why uh, Messenger of the Covenant said, why it is important to acknowledge and believe every minute of the day God is running everything and why he said, this should be your next mantra. So to remember all the time. So basically, we have to come to this conclusion that there is nothing in control of me except choosing God. There's only one thing we have control of, that every decision we make, every step we take, are we choosing God? Or are we choosing Satan? You know, that's the only thing we have, which is called the free will, right? Everything else, God is running. The day we completely eliminate that thinking that I can be, I can do anything, you know, that is the form of true submission and killing the ego. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much for your comment, uh, sister. And you asked how you can access. I think you got into the wrong chat. We're in VC one dash chat. The verses are there, and sister and brother Steve mentioned you, or he didn't mention you, but he said your name over there. Um. If you can check in VC1 dash chat, you can follow along with the commentary and messages as well as the verses being loaded in the chat. If you have any questions, let us know. Okay, inshallah, I'll consult Brother Steve um, to set me up there. Right now, I was just stumbling around here and there. Anyways, it's okay. Salam alaikum. No problem. Salam alaikum. Yeah, peace be upon you. Welcome to the submission server. Praise God. It's a blessing to have you and everyone else here. This is the world's largest public Quran study on earth. So this is an amazing blessing today. Uh, okay. We have another half hour of Quran study. Please bring the next question, anyone, or comments. Um, I just wanted to um, add um, regarding the... I think, mashallah, sister, Sana put it well. I just wanted to add and highlight a little bit um, that, you know, when the when God um, asked the angels to fall prostrate before Adam, they all fell prostrate except Satan. So Satan um, not prostrating. So, so this shows that they all had free will. Um, and my understanding from the verses of the Quran is that all of God's creatures have free will. And then it depends on what we do with it. It's a cause and effect system. So the angels obeyed, fell prostrate, but Satan didn't. So there was a very different um, outcome. A Satan didn't prostrate because of the arrogance and ego, and he was banished. Um, and we didn't uphold God's absolute authority. So then, you know, we know we know what happened after that. So. Um, God's all of God's creatures have the, the free will and then it's like what does one choose and it's a cause and effect system so if we choose well and wisely it's a positive outcome and if we don't then we face the consequences so with that freedom comes responsibility and um, it's that idea and so um, I think it was also brought up that that verse that is predetermined that I, I will fill hell with jinns and humans I think that my understanding of that is that it goes with God's system of freedom, free will, and then God knows that, you know, with free will, some are not going to choose well and wisely. And in fact, 
God knows that majority are not going to uh, choose well and wisely and are not going to um, make it. Thanks. <laughs>